Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today I'm going to show you how to move your Drupal site off of your local host and onto your server. Um, uh, my host that I'm using is uh, Media Temple, and I have a dedicated virtual. However, as long as you have SSH access and uh, you can create a database, then this tutorial will suit you fine. Okay, so you can follow along as much as you can, and uh, it might be a little bit different in your host the way it looks, but the concepts are all going to be the same. So to move your site, we have to do two things. We have to move the database and we have to move the files. Okay, so um, the first of which uh, we'll want to accomplish by exporting the database from your, um, I'm using MAMP, so your PHP MyAdmin, your local PHP MyAdmin. And the um, second thing, we're going to want to bundle up our files. We're going to do it in a, um, a tar gzip and we're going to throw it up onto our server where we're going to uncompress it and then we have to just change a couple of files okay um, and we also have to import the database onto our server i will also be showing you how to create the database on your server as well okay so um, first thing we want to do actually before we move anything is you want to clear the cache on your site uh, sometimes with these drupal sites um, if they've built up a large cache when you go to import the database, uh, the database might be a little too large and you might get some problems. So let's clear the cache first. Okay, now we're going to go to your map and then find the database that you're using. This one I'm using is D7 underscore ST. And I'm going to click export here at the top. And then I want to um, name this something. I'm going to say D7 um, ST underscore um, July 18th just so I can keep track of which one it is. And I'm gonna gzip this, uh, just compress it, nice and good. Okay, we're gonna click go. And it's just gonna download this to your downloads folder, uh, which I have off screen here. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is we want to compress our files. Um, and so I'm gonna do that using uh, terminal, I'm using iterm here, and we're just going to uh, change directory into the directory where our site is located. So mine's in sites. And um, it's just in there. If I do a you know, list here, you can see a whole bunch of these tar, tar files. Um, but the folder I'm looking for is ST. Okay, so now I'm going to want to compress this site. So one issue that you may or may not have is um, sometimes in Max OS X, I don't really know what causes this. If you do, um, you, you know, feel free to enlighten me. I've been trying to, you know, get this working a little bit better. Um, I get these, uh, it looks like a dot underscore and then dot files. They're supposed to be like hidden files. Um, but when I tar, tar these up, sometimes these get included. However, I have a quick fix here. I don't know if this is the best solution for this. But when we tar here to compress our files, I'm just going to add an exclude and we're going to exclude any file that looks like that. So to compress this, you want to do your tar command, which is going to be uh, tar, T-A-R, space, and then hyphen. And we're going to do um, C-Z-V-F. And then we're going to name the file. So I'll call this ST and then July 18th. And then you do dot tgz, okay? And then you're going to do a space, and this is where you pick the folder that you want. So I'm going to do st, which is the folder that I want to tar. And then now I'm going to add this exclude statement so that it excludes those files. I'm going to do hyphen hyphen, and then exclude equals, and then quotes period underscore, and then I'm going to star that. So that's a wild card. It's basically saying any file with this um, that starts with this dot underscore, it's going to ignore. And then another quote, we're going to hit enter and it's going to go through and compress all our files. Okay, so you can look at a go. So once this is done, uh, using your favorite FTP application, you can go ahead and upload this to your server. I'll be showing that in just one second. Okay, cool. So uh, it's done with that. So here's my FTP, and here's uh, where our tar is file is located. I'm just going to grab this and throw it right up on my server. Okay, so while this is uploading, which may take a second, you know, you could actually probably drag and drop just your folder up here. Like, I could just do this. Uh, but, you know, this it would take forever. This compressed file is going to be a lot faster, and it's probably a lot more um, just secure for your, your files. Um, I probably would always do the tar. So 
Now I'm going to go to my host and I'm going to log in. So give me one second, I'm gonna log into my host and get to my um, server. Okay, so now I'm in um, my back end here. Uh, of course, yours is, could look very different. Um, but what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go to websites and domains, and then I'm going to create a database. So the first thing we wanna, um, actually, let's first off, let's, uh, let's create a subdomain. Um, and let's create a new one. Let's create, add a new subdomain here. And I'm just gonna call this test dot and then my URL and then the document root will just be st because this is what our folder was named before. So we want this domain to point to this folder name. I'm gonna click OK. And it's going to create this subdomain. Um, if you have, you know, you're doing this on your primary domain, which this is not for me, it's gonna be a little bit different. Okay, so I'm gonna click databases. And in here, I'm going to add a new database. So I'm gonna click add a new database and I'm gonna give this database a name. Um, so this database on our old server was D7 underscore ST. If we keep that the same, that's one less thing we have to worry about getting messed up. And we want to be a MySQL, okay? We'll click okay. Oh, it's, I'm sorry, it's giving me a clash because I already have this database in here, but I wanna show you how to do this fresh. So. I'll call this D7 underscore ST2, just so it's different, okay? Click okay. Now you need to add a new database user. I'm gonna add a new database username, and this must be unique. So this is gonna be admin ST2, um, because that's easy to remember. I'm actually gonna copy this so I don't forget it later. And then new password, I'm gonna make it something easy I can remember, and it's just going to be test. Um, that way, uh, you know, oh, We'll test test one. Okay. Of course, I recommend using a secure password for this, but this is a you know totally you know insecure example, and this is I'm going to be deleting this database the moment that I finish this tutorial anyway. So, cool. So now we have our database created. We have our user created. Now we need to upload that previous database into our database. I'm going to click Web Admin. So this is your PHP My Admin. If you've gotten here from a different way, um, that's fine as long as you're here and you have a database to go into. Let's go to Databases and you'll see our ST2 database. I'm going to select that and now that we're inside of that database, I'm going to click Import. We're going to choose a file and it's going to be our database that we export in. I'm going to open that, click Go. It's going to import this database. Okay, now, there are, now that our database has been imported, all we have to do is um, uncompress our files. So if you remember, we uploaded our files here, um, and here it is, ST July 18th. I'm now going to SSH into my server, and I'm going to browse to those files. If you do not have SSH access, I suggest that you, um, you know, contact your host and find out how you can get SSH access or follow some tutorial for your particular host. Um, if you're familiar with SSH, then great, you could SSH into your server. And now I'm going to browse to where my um, files are. Var WW B hosts. Like I said, this could all be very different on your particular host if you're using a media temple dedicated virtual this is what you're going to be doing and we're going to cd into my main folder okay if i see everything in here here's our tar file which is our st july 18th and now if i want to decompress this all i have to do is tar hyphen x z v f and then our name of our tar Okay, and I hit go. It's gonna uncompress this. Cool. Um, oh, it looks like it didn't exclude these files. Yeah, I'm still looking on a, a better switch for that. And I don't know if it happens to everybody. It seems like it, you know, I've seen a little bit about it maybe. Uh, if, like I said, if you have any knowledge about why this is happening or um, what you can do to fix it, let me know because, you know, um, I don't think it's happening to everybody, okay? So let me refresh this. And here's our folder, ST. So now we have that test uh, subdomain that's gonna be pointing to this folder and we have a database. 
So let's go to this folder and see what happens. This is going to be test.scottolinsky.com. Okay, we're going to get a Drupal error. This is a uh, pretty common error if you're seeing this. Um, access denied for user root at localhost using password yes. This is because we have not told Drupal um, the database credentials or even what database to look at. So let's come in here and let's go to your favorite FTP app. And in your site, we're going to go to, um, let's see, sites and then default and then settings.php. I'm going to open this with uh, my favorite text editor, Sublime Text 2. Okay, now that you're in your settings file, we have to scroll down here. Um, to this line right here. This is where your site is getting its database information. So uh, if you remember our database name was d7 underscore st2. It's whatever you named it there. Our username was admin st2 and our password was not rtc as we had it before. However, it was test1. Okay, so let's save this and let's go back to our browser um, and get the notification that it's uploaded. You can refresh this. And once you're done here refreshing, here is your site. So now I can log in here as normal. Let's go to slash user. And here's my account. Enter my password. And I'm logged in. Let's have it save my password. And here's my site. Um, of course, this is not my, my live site. This is just this test one here. Um, and if we go to configuration here, you might see one or more problems are detected with your Drupal installation. Okay, um, go to status report and you're going to see that uh, there's some things that are need to be configured. So it's going to say that I have a Drupal core update. That's fine. I can update that in a little bit. It's also saying it can't find this directory files. It's not writable. So what you're going to have to do is come in and remake that um, file directory files. You're going to need to make this writable. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to change the permissions. I'm going to make this uh, 777. I'm going to apply. I'm actually going to apply to enclosed because the folders that are in here just contain your image cache files and stuff like that. Uh, nothing really uh, confidential in here for me. Uh, if you have certain files you don't want people to get access to, um, you can configure yours differently, okay? So let's click on this file settings page to fix that. Okay, if you see here, this is in red. This is your temporary directory files. What you can do is just delete this. When you save it, it's going to automatically configure that for you. Um, so we'll save this. Now everything is green, nice and good. Let's go back to our configuration. Let's click the status report again and see what else is wrong. Okay, so it's now saying Drupal core status. Okay, that's fine. This is just normal. I can update core later. Um, flex slider must be, okay, so they're saying there's an incorrect version of flex slider. Um, that's fine. I can fix that later too. Nothing really crucial here. And um, saying there's updates to some modules. Great, well that is successful. Let me clear this cache and uh, come to our site. And you want to click around here to make sure everything's all good. But, um, you know, for the most part, that's it. Okay? So just remember, you got to take your files, take your database, and put them both up. And then you have to connect them, reconnect them. Okay? So here's a site working. And I have successfully transferred my site to a new uh, location. And the process for this will be the same whether you're moving it off the server to local, local to server, um, pretty much anywhere you want to move it. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment in the video below. Um, if you know how to get rid of that pesky, you know, dot underscore thing I'm having, then, you know, leave a comment. That, that'd be super helpful. Uh, but yeah, so this is how you do it. Um, once again, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and thanks for watching. Bye.